Well, good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Sorry, it's been so long. Uh, the semester ended a uh, really crazy note. We went into summer and uh, been really busy uh, teaching and uh, taking over some other duties. Uh, the summer, my boss is currently out on a medical uh, leave, so that's uh, left us with a lot of work to do. So I've kind of fallen behind on making videos, but I want to go ahead and uh, start a new series of videos on a 12 lead ECG interpretation, specifically the high yield concepts that uh, paramedics need to know, things that you look for out in the field, things that indicate uh, major problems. So uh, before we get into looking at 12 lead ECGs, I just want to build up some basic intuition. So what are we looking at here? Well, we're looking at the heart. Specifically, we're looking at the electrical activity um, of the heart as you have that wave of depolarization that moves through the heart. And we can infer, we can make some inferences about what may or may not be going on with the heart based on an analysis of the electrical activity. Um, and before we get into the, the, the whole analysis, I just want to, we need to familiarize ourselves with the kind of the basic anatomical structures of the heart. So we're actually looking at, uh, have a model of the heart here. We're actually looking at it from the um, anatomical position. So that is to say, um, this, uh, while this looks right, this would actually be the patient's left. So this is the left side of the heart. This is the right. Okay, you're looking at superior, inferior. And then if we flip it around, this would be your, um, your posterior or your dorsal uh, view of the heart. And if you notice right away um, off of the aor aortic arch here, okay, that comes out of the left ventricle, so blood is pumped out of the left ventricle through the aortic ar arch, and uh, it goes uh, to the superior part of the body, and then down the descending aorta to the inferior part of the body. Um, right, under, right underneath the leaflets of the valve, um, right at the root, of the aortic arch as it comes out of the heart, you have two major uh, vessels that come off. You have your, your what we call your left coronary artery, which is really hard, really not visualized well in this model, but it kind of comes off here and comes down. This is called the LCA, or the left coronary artery. And then the right side, you have your RCA right here, or your right coronary artery. And the right coronary artery will start here, as you might imagine, uh, in most people, will supply the right side of the heart with blood, with circulation, with perfusion. Um, specifically, it will supply uh, parts of the right atrium. The SA node, the sinoatrial node in the right atrium, is often um, uh, perfused um, by the RCA. And if you can see here, um, you can imagine that the left ventricle is uh, right in here, and then the septum is, is so the septum is kind of right here that divides the right and left side. Um, as this artery comes down, you see um, this surface here, the inferior surface, part of the inferior aspect of the left ventricle down in here is also supplied by the right coronary artery in, in most people. So you're looking primarily at the right atrium, the sinoatrial node, the right ventricle, and the inferior aspect of the left ventricle um, tends to be supplied more often than not by the RCA or the right coronary artery. Um, the left coronary artery, however, um, supplies, as you might imagine here, if you look, uh, it would supply uh, first, um, well, the left coronary artery, before we get into that, actually branches into two major arteries. It branches into what's called the LAD, or the left anterior descending, and then an artery that kind of goes back along the side here called the circumflex. So it kind of, so the LAD comes uh, down the front of the heart, um, so you have your, your LCA, your left coronary artery, or left main, comes down here. And then it branches into the circumflex and the left anterior descending, or the LAD. Um, the left anterior descending <coughs> uh, branch of the left coronary artery supplies the, as you might imagine here, the anterior surface of the heart. And so you have your uh, septal wall, okay, the septum and the bundle branches that separates the right from the left side of the heart um, and the bundle branches that go through the septum. Um, it also, the LAD also supplies a, a big portion of the left ventricle 
um, a significant part of the left ventricle, the anterior aspect of the left ventricle is supplied by um, this artery in, in most people as well. And then the circumflex, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm getting over a cold. Imagine that, a cold during the summer. Um, the circumflex kind of wraps around the side here. And so if you look at this, this is the lateral aspect of the left ventricle. Okay, so just to review uh, real quickly, the RCA, the right coronary artery, supplies the, whoa, the RCA comes down, supplies the right atrium, the sinal atrial node or the SA node, the right ventricle, and the inferior aspect of the left ventricle. The, um, the LCA, comes down and bifurcates into two major branches. The LCA becomes the LAD, or the left anterior descending, and the circumflex, the LAD, supplies the septum with perfusion, the bundle branches, the anterior portion of the left ventricle, and then the circumflex, okay, supplies the lateral portion of the left ventricle. Um, now, on a standard 12-lead ECG, and we'll talk about this in a little more detail, <clears throat> the posterior aspect of the heart is not well represented, and there are some um, modified uh, techniques that we have to do to get a very good view of the posterior surface. So you don't typically have a whole lot of information. There are some inferences you can make. Um, uh, about some uh, what we call reciprocal changes or reciprocal light changes that may point to pathology in the posterior wall. Um, but uh, it, it's not directly observed on a, on a standard 12-lead uh, ECG. V1 through V6, your leads V1 through V6, really are looking at more of the anterior and lateral um, part of the heart as a whole. But we'll talk about some modified techniques that we can do to focus in on the posterior wall since um, you know a non-negligible number of um, myocardial infarctions uh, will present as a posterior wall uh, myocardial infarction or um, will occur or a posterior wall will occur uh, along with other types of pathology going on in the heart. And, and it, is, it is good to pick up on the posterior wall because that will in, potentially increase morbidity and mortality if the posterior wall is involved. Okay, so that's just the introduction to the major coronary arteries and localizing the areas of the heart that those coronary arteries perfuse. And that's going to be very important because the 12-lead ECG, different groups of leads on the 12 lead ECG look at these different areas of the heart that we've talked about. And so what that does is that gives us a mechanism that allows us to localize or it gives us some information about where a certain problem may be occurring um, in the heart. And there are some basic uh, assumptions that we can make about where uh, that myocardial infarction may be occurring. And uh, it can help us anticipate certain um, complications and consequences. It's certainly not a panacea. We can't um, have real robust inferences, but it can still uh, point us in certain directions nonetheless. Okay, guys, uh, I think I'll cut it off here, and in the next video, we'll talk about some of the major ECG changes that we're going to be looking at.